Behavior Designer is an asset created by Opsiv. It lets you create behavior trees in Unity to handle your AI agent's decision making. Today, we'll dive into how good this asset really is. If you aren't aware, a behavior tree gives you a nice top-down or hierarchical and visual way to define your AI agent's behaviors. Now, I'm going to do this review in the form of an example because I think that's the best way to help you understand if this asset can be useful for you or not. I'll also give you my final verdict at the end. You can find an affiliate link to this asset in the description down below. At the time of making this video, it is 50% off and there is a big sale going on on the store. So you can find links to all of those in the description below. For our example, I have this basic cube in my scene and I want it to check if the player is within distance of it. And if it's not, I want it to move towards the player. Then once it's there, I want it to wait. And if the player moves out of range of it, I want it to start following the player again. Kind of like a companion in a game. Let's take a look at how we would model this behavior using Behavior Designer. Firstly, we'll need to add a behavior tree component to our cube. Then we can open that up and we get a nice canvas for us to drag on tasks to control our cube. Tasks are blocks or actions that will define what the agent does and when. You get two different types of tasks, actions and conditions. Action tasks actually do things like move the player or scale it up or down. And conditions just determine if something is true or false when evaluating that task in the tree. So the first thing we're going to do to make our cube follow our player is to drag in a selector task. A selector task is kind of like an or statement in code. It will evaluate all of its children from left to right until it finds one that succeeds. And if none of them succeed, the selector will return false in the tree's overall evaluation. Now, we want our cube to first check if the player is within a specified distance. And if it is, we just want to set idle and wait to see if the player moves out of range. To do this, we can use something called a sequence. A sequence is like an AND statement in code, and it will evaluate all of its children from left to right, and if any of them fail, then the sequence itself will be evaluated as failed as well. To check if our player is within the distance, we'll need a conditional task that takes in a target game object and calculates the distance between the cube and that target. But unfortunately, there is no built-in task called within distance. So your options at this point are to either write a script defining your own conditional task, or to buy one of the various add-on packs offered by the developer, specifically the movement pack, which contains, in my opinion, a couple crucial tasks for most AI behavior trees. To be honest, I'm not too fond of this approach to asset sales. It's almost like buying a car and then on delivery, you realize there's no steering wheel. And then when you phone the salesman to complain, he says, well, you can make your own steering wheel and attach it really easily to the car, or you can just buy one and from the shop. I don't really want to make my own steering wheel. And I'm quite happy that the price of the steering wheel is included in the overall price of the car. I don't really mind the idea of selling add-on packs with more nuanced task behaviors that not everyone might need. But movement logic is in most cases the whole point of buying an asset like Behavior Designer. So this is a pretty weird decision from the developer for me. And in my opinion, it would make more sense to just include the price of this movement pack in the cost of Behavior Designer. Yeah, you might lose some money because you would have to give people who already bought the asset this add-on for free, but it just feels like a more complete product with it included. But anyway, they do have an example for a conditional task in the documentation called within sight. So I copied that into my project and created a duplicate that does a distance check instead and called it within distance. I will say that the API is really great and incredibly easy to use. So creating custom tasks is really easy with Behavior Designer's API. Now with our distance check completed, we can just add an idle task that keeps the tree alive and waits to see if something changes. Now on the right hand side of our selected task, we want to move towards our player and then sit in idle once we've gotten there. To do this, we can add another sequence task and two children. 
Firstly, we'll need a move towards action, which is not included in the existing actions, but they do have an example in the documentation for a basic transform based move towards action, which I copy and pasted into my project. And then once the cube reaches the distance, it will stop moving and sit in the idle state. A really cool feature of Behavior Designer is conditional aborts. We can use conditional aborts to cancel the current execution and reevaluate parts of the tree. For example, with our sequence that checks the distance, if we set the abort type to both, it can cancel the execution of the lower priority tree, which is the movement side of the tree. And it can cancel the current idle state to reevaluate the within distance part of the tree. This way, we can keep checking if the target is within range of the cube, and if not, move toward it. And then if the target moves out of range, the tree will reevaluate and the cube will start to follow it again. I know this might seem confusing at first, and yeah, there is a bit of a learning curve here, but once you understand the basics, it's really easy to start to build out more complicated and complex behavior trees for your agents. There is also a really great debugger included in Behavior Designer. You can set breakpoints on specific tasks, which really helps when you're trying to figure out why your agents aren't doing exactly what you expect them to do. You can also just take a look at the current execution of a behavior tree by clicking a game object that has a behavior tree component attached to it. And it's pretty satisfying to see what's going on whilst your game is running. Another really cool feature is variables. You can have shared variables in a tree that let you store and use variable values within the current tree at runtime. For example, we could create a variable of type game object called player. And then using the find with tag task, we can find an object by tag and store it in the player variable. Then in our within distance, we can use the player variable as the reference for the target. We can also use global variables, which let you track variables across different trees. This can be really useful if your agent needs to make decisions based on what other agents are currently doing. Performance wise, I haven't really had any issues, but this will greatly depend on what you're trying to do with your behavior trees. If you're searching through every single game object in the scene for every tick in a behavior tree, then you're probably going to have some major performance issues. But for most use cases, I think you'll be fine here. If you do want to be running crazy amounts of behavior trees, then it might be worth taking a look at Behavior Designer Pro, which is a recently released asset by Opsiv, which makes use of entities and dots. The documentation is really solid. And everything you need to understand is discussed in pretty good detail on there, especially when it comes to the API and what's available in there for you to use from a code point of view. I would say though that is one of those assets that I didn't spend too much time looking at the documentation and spent more time just fiddling and getting my hands dirty with it. There are some things that you really do need to look at the documentation to understand, like conditional aborts that took me a bit of time to get my head wrapped around, but for the most part just dragging and dropping things on and using the debugger to see what's going on was the best way for me to get comfortable with this, but maybe you're different and you prefer looking into the documentation in detail before getting your hands dirty. Ops of support is one of the best I've received on the asset store. You log any issues you have on their forums and I've received a response to most of my queries within 24 hours. There is also an active discord community and you will often get answers to your questions a bit more quickly there. Overall, I've had a really positive experience using this asset, and I think it really shines when you use it with other ops of products like the ultimate character controller. There is an integration for behavior designer that gives you access to use built in ultimate character controller functions like abilities. There are some integrations that are offered with other assets like the dialogue system and playmaker. So all in all, yeah, I'd give this asset a 4 out of 5, and if the movement pack was included, it would be an easy 5 out of 5. All in all, a really solid asset, and it's trusted by loads of developers on the store and has been for years. Finally, just a huge thank you to my patrons for your constant support. You guys keep me going. You are the best. If there are any other reviews you would like to see me do, please leave a comment down below, and I'll take a look at making that happen. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.